What's up gamers? This is Jim from Just Push Play here, Ottawa's video game web show. And it's been a while. I'm sorry, it's been a while. Uh, I've been really busy either recording new footage, doing, doing new events. Um, there's a lot going on. Uh, if you're on my Facebook, you get probably a better idea of just how much is getting organized. Um, it's been pretty crazy. I know, I think it's been at least two weeks since I recorded one of these. Uh, I don't count the, um, the ones when I, I'm on a microphone. Uh, I don't really count that. I, you know, just counting the webcam. Um, videos that I'm making here and I just haven't made one uh, due to just so much content going up uh, in case you haven't noticed yet uh, we're over 400 videos um, which is pretty amazing uh, I didn't realize that we gained that much um, but yeah it's it's been so busy um, but I feel like you know it's awesome that I can just sit down, I can record this, talk about, you know, anything gaming related, and, you know, I can connect with my fellow gamers here in Ottawa, and that, I, I just love doing that, I really love talking about games, and it's great that here in Ottawa there are so many passionate people about gaming, I've met a lot, uh, there are a lot of really cool people here in Ottawa, and, uh, you know, they always make each other feel welcome. That's the best part about Ottawa. You know, Ottawa is just so amazing uh, for that reason. You know, people will, if you have a question, they will help you out. And, you know, us Canadians are really awesome for that in general. But, uh, yeah, so there's been a lot going on, as I said. Um, I wish I could make these videos day in, day out. I'd probably run out of topics eventually. <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, it's been a blast, you know, we've had a number, uh, that's the other thing, we've had a number of uh, Let's Game Ottawa events, so you come out, um, and you bring, you know, you can bring some games too, you can bring some controllers, uh, you can suggest, we're always listening to people, and uh, if you look at the number 6, it's actually PlayStation 3 based, instead of Wii slash GameCube based. Uh, so we are always listening to you guys, uh, you know, we want to hear everything, we want to hear, the, you know, what you love, what you hate about what we're doing, uh, what you think we should be doing, um, because, you know, it's all good, it's all great, you know, great feedback, um, and, you know, I've, I just love hearing back from people and from uh, gamers here in Ottawa. So yeah, we've been really busy with those events, and we've had, uh, you know, every pretty much we almost, I think almost every single time we've had like four people um, gaming, like if not, then, you know, in case of like Smash Brothers, there's the CPU, so they can handle the fourth controller, so we're fine. Um, so yeah, there's, there are so many games out there, uh, just in terms of the GameCube games that I have brought to those events while we're on this topic. Uh, we barely covered the surface of games that I uh, I could bring, and uh, you know that's pretty neat. Um, I have my favorites too, but you know it's good for us to cycle the games in and out um, because as great as you know, say you love Smash Brothers Melee or Smash Brothers Brawl, you know playing the same game is kind of you know, kind of gets a little bit boring, you know, it's more interesting if people can see us playing something that's a bit different. So yeah, that, that's that been going on, uh, we've been doing that once a week, um, a few weeks we did like 0.5s, uh, there was a 1.5, 2.5, um, I don't think there was 3.5 events, so sort of in between the two events, so that was a lot of fun, and um, yeah, and uh, you can check out most I think like 90% of the footage, maybe like close to 90% of the footage that we shot um, at those events uh, has gone up. You know, some of them are uh, better footage than others, but I mean, we're still gaming and, uh, you know, that's the most important part. You know, Ottawa has, you know, a scene to promote games, discuss games, and, you know, we're all united together for it. Um, 
so anyways uh that we're gonna keep doing those events because not only are they you know um really interesting and you know they bring people together they're a lot of fun and that's ultimately what i that's the first thing that comes to mind for these events it's not about you know it's not about uh, charging people five dollars for entry. Or it's not about that. It's about you know uniting, bringing people together, and uh, you know everyone having a good time. And uh, you know every single event um, we've played, uh, at least one game that we've had an amazing time. And actually, I'd say most of the games were um, amazing too. So, anyways. Uh, we're going to keep that going and we're only going to get bigger, better and, uh, you know, it, the possibilities are endless. So if you're interested in helping out, uh, if you know someone that's interested in helping out and, uh, you know, give us a shout. Um, as I said, we always want to hear your feedback. Um, I'm always here to listen to people. You can send me, you can look me up on Facebook. I'll talk to you. Um, you know, as long as obviously, you know, you're not weird, <laughs> as long as you're not weird or, or I can't understand you, if you're not speaking English, then, you know, it might be a bit harder for me to know what you're contacting me for since, uh, but, you know, I'm always here to talk to people and I love hearing feedback and, uh, you know, Ottawa. Ottawa is pretty big, but you know it's tightly knit, and it's it's cool that we have a scene like that, and we can do we can do this in Ottawa. I mean, it it's not you like to think that it's possible anywhere, but you know maybe I I think it's not necessarily possible everywhere. You know, it's hard to get around to other places. Say Toronto, it might not be quite as easy to to meet everyone that's in either the gaming scene or sort of um, you know they. Uh, sort of comic book scene like they're sort of they're really all entwined here in Ottawa and that's what makes Ottawa really cool and that's why I love Ottawa uh, I love Toronto and I love Montreal but you know it's all about Ottawa t for me so that is that and uh, yeah I think that's pretty much it you know I've been collecting different games and systems I don't probably unless you've actually been on my Facebook you can't really see that um but i've been collecting games and i've been uh my buddy's been helping out uh either gaming with me or um you know hosting you know all or a combination of all those and maybe something else uh you know um and so they've been helping out other gaming or you know giving me feedback so you know that's all good stuff so anyways so today's topic since it's been a while since i've uh, done one of these um, unfortunately, the 2DS came out, so that's today's topic, the 2DS, the 2DS came out, and it was just a really busy time, I had a lot of footage that was sort of backlogged, so I couldn't really cover at the time, and, uh, I thought someone else would sort of step up and talk about the 2DS, other than, like, IGN and all those guys who, you know, they do this for a living, we're doing it for fun, um, and we're doing it out of passion, like, real, you know, passion um, for gaming because we've been gamers for probably a long time uh, a lot of the people that have been helping out have been gaming for years so that's a long time and uh, yeah it's um, it's cool to have a independent uh, analysis so anyways the 2DS it got announced uh, I have the date here actually uh, August 28th so it was, as again it was like two weeks ago uh, and at first, when I saw the news, I'm like, okay, it's on IGN, but it's like an April Fool's joke. Like, okay, it's the end of August. I had to check the date. I'm like, is this, is this for real? And I'm sure a lot of people felt that because I saw, you know, Ottawa Street Pass. I saw their comments, and they had a lot of really intelligent stuff. Those guys are really bright. Uh, I'll throw up the link to their Twitter, and you guys can check them out because uh, I like playing 3DS games, Mario Kart with them. So. You know, anyone in Ottawa is welcome to do that and just show up. Um, you can look up them up. They're pretty cool guys and gals. Um, so yeah, they were talking about it, and uh, I did further, you know, seeing what the reaction was other than my own about the 2DS. So, anyways, we're gonna go straight from 
uh, top to bottom about the 2DS and, you know, just different ideas other people had and ideas I had from the reaction of that news. And that's what uh, we'll cover today um, since it's been such a long time. So it's a 2DS, so it's not a 3DS. It removes the entire functionality of 3D uh, from the system. It cannot do 3D but it is compatible with 3DS and DS games. Um, it's going to cost $130. Uh, I think it was Canadian. It could be, I think it was American actually, not Canadian. Um, so it's coming out October 12th. So it's, yeah, today's the 13th, Friday the 13th. Ooh. Um, so it's about a month away. So I didn't leave it too late. I'm still good in that sense. Um, the slider puts the system to sleep, so that's a bit different from the uh, 3DS, and it's a completely flat, if you haven't seen it, I assume people have seen it by now, but I mean it's a completely flat 3DS that we have all seen before that doesn't, you know, bend over with hinges. Uh, it's flat, it won't, um, and it will be red and blue at launch. Uh, the 2DS only has one speaker. like. When I first, I don't, I don't remember since it was two weeks ago, but I remember just thinking one speaker and then it just didn't, you know, it, I guess it didn't trigger at the time, but one speaker is pretty, if you never heard mono before, think of like the Beatles. The best example I can think of is the Beatles, original recordings, when they first started out, I think their first album, Please Please Me, was in mono. And you don't really see mono uh, so much. Um, anymore because it sort of has like a flat sound to it if you if you haven't heard mono compared to stereo we're kind of spoiled by stereo so once you go back to mono it's like wow you know the sound doesn't sound as um it doesn't sound like it's in the same room uh, it's been a while since i listened to mono but you know that i think is kind of a um sort of like a con of getting this 2ds um one speaker mono I mean, it, it just won't sound as good. I think it, if it said that if you have headphones, you know, it would still sound good, um, since obviously it's not using the speaker. But I mean, that's kind of unfortunate because if you're talking to your friends, and in the case of the people that this is aimed for, which I'll get to in a bit, it's kind of weird that uh, it's just in, um, it's just in mono. But I guess that's what they had to do to make the price difference, the cut the price and uh, make the system what it was, which is kind of unfortunate. That that was the biggest um, hit against having the, uh, you know, 2DS uh, versus the 3DS, in my opinion. Um, so it's actually aimed at players aged uh, 7 plus, which I think is really smart because there's, it's a market where kids need a gaming system, but they might not even care about the 3ds features so um so actually i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing this right but phyllis aim i think is how you pronounce his name i've never done it on uh bef never pronounced it before so and he said how do we their goal was a nintendo how do we get more people playing games specifically nintendo games and i think this is actually a really smart way of getting people to play uh, more Nintendo games and more video games and lowering the price point is always a good way to get people to buy more systems. Now um, this leads into the next point which is it's perfect for the new Pokemon game that's coming out. So Nintendo's really strategized this and done a good job in that sense. Uh, Pokemon XY games, uh, I think that's October, I don't remember these dates, but you know that's really soon and they've, they've planned this all out um, perfectly from, I think Nintendo deserves more credit for doing this than uh, most people have been giving them for a while. You know, parents will like it because it's cheaper. That was a point someone had on Ottawa Street Pass as well. Um, you know, it's straightforward um, game system. I wrote down as well, it looks like a toy. Um, I think that's really important because it, it's not threatening. I think any sort of toy for kids, uh, especially, you know, uh, if you're not aware, I work at a toy store and I've worked at uh, other places that sell toys and in the kids section in the past, 
of uh, stores, and if it looks like a toy, kids are more likely to pick it up, and you know they'll think it's their own. You know they'll claim that as its own, their own. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's really important, and I think it does have that sort of look where it's a toy even more than um, the past versions of uh, the Nintendo DS and. Um, I'd say even more than the Game Boy. I'd say the Game Boy, except for the Game Boy Color, because that just, they went crazy with the colors, but even it looks more like a toy than the original Game Boy. The original Game Boy sort of has like a, I don't know, to me it has like a rugged, um, like a rugged look to it where it's neither, you know, overly masculine, I would say, and it's not too kiddish. It's sort of somewhere between the two is the impression I have, so it sort of like somehow manages to appeal to all the age groups. I, I think that's that's my impression at least. And with this, it just, it definitely looks like a toy. The 2DS looks like a toy, and it's a very smart maneuver in my uh, opinion by Nintendo. This is really smart. Um, so there are no hinges, that was my next point. Um, it won't break like the uh, the remade Nintendo uh, DS, the white ones uh, that came out later that I never bothered to even, you know, that never interested me because it just, they just broke so easily. I heard so many stories of horror stories of people opening like their their um, original Nintendo DS, uh, what were they called, XL or the remade ones. Um, yeah, so the people would open them and they'd already be cracked straight out. Actually, I think my original Nintendo DS, the Mario Kart promo that they had, it was broken or it was otherwise damaged and I had to replace it straight away. So, I mean, that in itself, um, or no, there was dead pixels, that's what it was for me. Dead pixels and I had to have it replaced and, you know, that really sucks because, you know, um, you don't, you want to, be able to play your system straight away. You don't want to wait. Oh, is my system? Is it going to take a week? Because, um, gee, even back then with the whole Mario Kart, uh, um, when that promo was going on, Mario Kart with the system, red and gray uh, system, there weren't a lot of uh, systems, spare systems. So if yours had a dead pixel or pixels or broken hinge or something, you might be waiting a while, so that's why, in the case of myself, I had a um, system, so I got my Mario Kart bundle um, switched with a blue one and, at EV Games at the time, and I just didn't want to wait, you know, because who knows when your popular system will come back in. So yeah, so no hinges to me, I find is like a huge selling point. Even though I would rather be able to hold it up personally, but um, yeah, so the, unfortunately without the hinges, that means the screen is always exposed to the elements, uh, external forces, you know, like hard impacts. That's a big one. I mean, uh, especially if the same for kids, I can see them, you know, I see, I, you know, I, I don't, I, I think it bothers me that people have a, sort of like a negative view on kids about dropping stuff and hard impacts, but, you know, I've personally seen adults drop their cell phones, and, you know, so it's not just kids, it's adults too, you know, generally people can, you know, people can be careless with their items, even though they should treat it very, very well. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, hard impacts, dirt, water, scratches. Um, so yeah, so taking away the next point is take away the 3DS of uh, um, ability actually drops the price significantly, which is very smart. Um, I would I personally buy a uh, 3DS that didn't have the 3D. No, not really. I think it, you know, I think I would personally prefer to keep it, even if I don't use it. Like I don't always use it, but I've been starting at least with Kid Icarus. Like that's a game that I highly recommend. I I enjoy it. It's starting to get hard. Uh, when I last played it, uh, sort of a curve sort of increased a bit more than I was expecting. <laughs> but, 
you know, the 3D really makes that game, in my opinion. I, I mean, it's a beautiful game, but the, the extra 3D really gives, to for me, that really gives the flight um, experience. And that's, I think if you took away the 3D, you just wouldn't get it, the same experience at all. It would be, it would be just like playing the Nintendo DS. The game would be great, but it wouldn't have that extra gimmick that uh, I think really adds to that game compared to... Um, you know any other like um, uh, games that actually just uh, you know uh, third not third person what am I thinking here third person perspective games where you like Devil May Cry like that you know uh, I think the 3D with and having the the wings it really um, it really does that extra element that makes that Kid Icarus uh, 3DS game special. So anyways, ramble, ramble, ramble. Um, so where was I? Um, so yeah, so the audience, probably the most of the audience for the 2DS doesn't even care about the 3DS. Uh, so they're not missing it. And uh, someone would say, I think this was on IGN that I looked. Someone said that the, uh, the 2DS would be better with like Wii U tablet grips. Well, you know, once you start adding something that's a bit different from the general um, design of the rest of the, the product so you know adding like rubber grips and stuff like the price I'm pretty sure the price will go up significantly in time uh, over time with, depending on the number of units you produce so um, yeah I'm sure it would be great to have rubber grips I'm sure you could probably buy them just to add them if you really want to to that 2DS like or make your own. I don't many people would necessarily do that to improve. Like they'd probably just deal with it. But I mean, it's a good idea. You know, I guess if you you really want a luxurious experience with your fingers. Uh, but I just don't see it happening. Um, in the case of like the Wii U tablet, it's already expensive to buy that. The technology inside that tablet is uh, the screen. Um, it's already expensive, so adding grips and stuff. Um, Another thing I thought was really cool was it's kind of a throwback to the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color. It sort of looks, remind me of um, those systems, even though um, it's been a long time since the Game Boy uh, and the Game Boy Color. Um, 96, and see, so yeah, I just pull these numbers out here. If you've been watching us, watching these webcams since the beginning, I like throwing numbers out. Um, and usually, actually I check them and usually I'm right. I think it was 96 or so for Game Boy Color, but you can look that up, 96, 97, uh, maybe 98 as well, tail end of, early end of 98. So, um, yeah, so on the downside, uh, it loses the portability, um, you know, it's not going to fit in your pockets really, unless you have like super long pockets, it's not going to fit um, in your pockets anymore with this new 2DS, so that doesn't appeal to me, I think kids, I mean, um, one person on the Auto Street Pass actually said, um, something about button placement sucks, uh, possibly awkward, uh, you know, the buttons are too big, the A, B, X, Y, circle D-pad, R and L buttons look huge compared to the bigger the 3DS, I don't know, it's hard to tell on a video, is my opinion on that, um, that's why I think until you actually have it there in your lap and you're actually using it, like there's so many examples, like look at the N64 controller, unless you actually had it in your hand, you'd be like, this this is a joke, right? This is another April Fool's joke by Nintendo or something. But it's it's one of those things that you actually have to play, use controller, and then you'll be like, you know, this is actually a good controller, you know. Um, and the N64 controller was actually pretty sweet and... Uh, so was the GameCube one, even though they look weird. They, you know, for most games they're good. Not anyway, tangent. But uh, the GameCube controller, in my opinion, wasn't so good for fighting games. But anyways, and uh, same with the N64 one. But for most other games. Um. So yeah. Uh. So yeah, the 2DS doesn't fit into people's pants. Um. It, I thought you know it might be easier to lose if you uh, you um. If you have to store in a pouch or a sleeve or a uh, book bag, 
but I think a lot of kids do that anyway, so, um, you know, it's not really a huge deal. I think if someone's careful with their stuff anyways, they'll be fine, but, uh, um, yeah, so I think I think that is a really smart move by Nintendo, and um, I guess we'll just have to see in October. Excuse me, um, how well it's actually gonna sell. So, and the fact that oh yes, actually before I forget, um, comparing the games here, I'm looking at the PlayStation Vita games and with the um, Nintendo 3DS slash 2DS library um, and I'm not sure if you know Sony has forgotten to announce more games but here in front of me I'm at GameFacts.com if you haven't ever heard of it it's a good site um, and I'm just looking at the games available here for uh, the PlayStation Vita and you know I just you know, there's a few cool games, Arkham Origins in October, and Angry Birds Star Wars, and but and Wise Memories of So was it Soseta? Yeah, so you, you see about six or seven games for the PlayStation Vita. All right, you know they look pretty cool games. You know you get your FIFA, Marvel Super Heroes, Valhalla Knights Three, and you get Angry Birds Star Wars, Tearaway. Um, I think I've looked at that game, but I don't remember what it is about right now on the spot. So yeah, you get those, and uh, you know, then you look at Nintendo's. Now, obviously, Nintendo, being Nintendo, they have games that are you know not necessarily aimed for the um, hardcore gamer, and uh, but they have a lot of games supposedly coming out uh, this fall. And while I don't personally want to get most of them, <laughs> uh, it's not about necessarily me. Uh, myself as the hardcore gamer, it's more about what sells, right? I mean, what, who, who is your audience? Who is buying your game systems and your accessories and everything, right? So here I'm seeing Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. I saw the trailer for that. It looks okay, you know? It looks like a fun movie if I just want to go see a movie for fun. So there's a game going to be out. Um, I think, what is that, in four days. So yeah, I see that, and then I should see Shifting World, which I think is a puzzle game. So I see Scribble Knots Unmasked, and I see, um, you know, Eturian, uh Odyssey Untold. So I think that's an RPG. Uh, you see uh, Rune Factory 4, which is, uh, I think, an adventure RPG. So then there's obviously Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. These are huge games, you know. These are games that even, you know, even though I don't rush out to buy a Pokemon game, I still realize these are huge games. And they're big games for Nintendo, they're big games for the system, and, you know, they're great for the third-party developers too, because if people are rushing out to the Pokemon X, that means they have the system. So if they are, and then they'll probably tell their friends, show their friends, and, like, you know, um... So yeah, they're, they're Beyblade Evolution. Would I buy it? No. But, you know, other people will. And people that are of either younger or maybe older people buying them for a younger group. So, you know, it's good to have these games. And that's what I see here. I see, like, maybe, uh, what do we see here? Um, 15, 20 games coming out. Um, uh, it's from September 17th, so four days from now, yeah. And then all the way to November 26th. And if you go back to the PlayStation Vita, which is, I think, yeah, November, uh, September 24th through to November 22nd. So you can see all these games are coming out for the 3DS. And I'm just wondering, like, PlayStation Vita, is it just sinking? Like, if Nintendo's got the 2DS, they're reducing the price, they've got all these games coming out for it, I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but it's surprising. And then, you know, Sonic Lost Worlds October 22nd. I'm not sure if that's coming out for the Vita. It's not listed there. Um, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, Plankton's Robotic Revenge. That's October 22nd, too. 
same day as Sonic Lost World, same day as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for the 3DS. I watched the show, it seems cool. Um, it's fun. Um, so you see all these other games, Ben 10, Omniverse 2, Power Rangers Megaforce on November 5th, uh, Adventure Time, Explore the Dungeon, because I don't know, November 19th, um, Mario Party Island Tour, that was announced fairly recently, November 22nd, you know, these are big games, and November 22nd is again, you know, Legend of Zelda, Link Between Worlds, you've probably heard of that too, um, you know, these are big games, you need to cover a lot of different demographics and that's what Nintendo seems to be doing you know Nintendo's been getting a lot of hate lately lately <laughs> lately lately um lately about it about you know not supporting the Wii U and you know 3DS was sluggish but I mean this is good for their markets I mean for reaching a number of different demographics it's it's good it Will I buy any of these 3DS games? Probably not. I'm not a huge Mario Party fan. Um, I'm not kind of on the um, um, on the fence about Legend of Zelda in between worlds, depending for a number of factors. I'm not gonna, uh, you know, the lo uh, length of the quest. Uh, is it, you know, something really different? Um, it looked cool when I saw it. I haven't watched the trailer or pictures. A while, but I mean, these are games that will sell your system. Games that cover again, I'm gonna say a number of demographics and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of different interests. And I think the PlayStation Vita, being the only uh, competitor, in my opinion, um, even though you have cell phones and people could be buying games off of that, I mean, people know about Nintendo and they're been making these. Uh, systems for a long time and uh, no I think that that is really crucial um, so just to sort of wrap things up here I think you know this 2DS is is very uh, it's a very smart move by Nintendo even though if uh, some people initially I didn't mention this earlier some people initially said you know Nintendo you really lost it this time and it's like actually no uh, I disagree with random commentary. You know, I think Nintendo really does know what they're doing. Uh, you know, they kind of screwed up the the games, maybe for the 3DS and for the Wii U, getting them out. But I mean, they seem to be knowing, doing, knowing what they're doing, in the sense that they're at least getting games out there. They may not be the most original uh, games. Um, the Nintendo problem I was talking about before. Um, they may not be the most original games, but at least you know they're getting out uh, games that are familiar to their audience, and then they are going to have a good Christmas. I'm pretty sure. You know they they still turn a profit. Last I read, uh, it was a recent article. Nintendo earned a profit even though uh, sales weren't too amazingly. Uh, going too amazingly well, um, you know, if you still turn a profit, you know, you know, you're still doing okay, I mean, Nintendo's been through the GameCube and everything, uh, those days, the dark days, or like the N64, like the N64 seemed to do, I think, decently, uh, the GameCube, I think, did better for Nintendo, but, um, and the Wii, obviously, did the, you know, the best, I think, out of all those in terms of uh, marketing and everything. So, yeah, I wouldn't underestimate Nintendo and the 2DS. They sometimes look a little bit eccentric and, uh, you know, finally as if they've lost it, but I think you can't really count Nintendo out. Um, I like all the game companies, but um, I am probably slightly biased towards Nintendo since I grew up primarily with Nintendo, um, but they definitely do know what they're doing most of the time. So, Anyways, this is a really long video um, since I had a lot of points and it's been a while. So, uh, guys, keep on gaming here in Ottawa. I'll keep on doing my best and, uh, you know, things will keep on getting better and better, I think, here in Ottawa for gamers uh, everywhere. So, um, just keep checking back on our Twitter account. Uh, keep checking for events. 
Uh, that's one thing. Before I go, I just want to say um, we're always gaming pretty much every week. We've done it for six weeks now. Count them six, plus the other side like 0.5 events. So uh, if you haven't come out yet, uh, definitely come out. Uh, if you want to bring game system, bring controller, you know that all helps out too. Uh, and more feedback on that for sure uh, would be awesome, just so that we can play the games that you guys want to play. I mean, you know, that's the point, to have fun and, you know, try to find out new games that um, your fellow gamers enjoy too. Uh, we're also having a Halloween event. Um, it's uh, Feast of the Dead, so check that out. Uh, I'm going to be promoting that, maybe a separate video. Uh, I'll talk about it uh, once we have things a bit more um, set in stone, but I mean, Ottawa is awesome. We have awesome gamers here, so uh, you know why don't we have events like this? And that's why we're doing events like this because it's possible. It's great. It's a great idea, and you know we're gonna do it. So we're gonna make it, things happen here in Ottawa. So I'm Jim from Just Push Play, Ottawa's video game web show. It's been a blast as always. I love to talk as you watch me for probably 25 minutes plus now. So keep on gaming guys, go sense go, and stay awesome.